Scott and here's Johnny. Yay! Doing good. You know, that could go either way. Either I'm entertaining like Johnny Carson or I'm trying to murder my family like the Shining. There you go. <laughs> either either Those way. Those are my options. Depends on the mood, right? How much yeah, yeah, exactly. Things yep. like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I have to tell, speaking of, before we get started into what we're talking about today, speaking of, I was uh, doing my normal job, taking care of the children and the adults in my little dental, and some <laughs> mother thought that I was hurting her child, which I'm not in the business of doing, <laughs> and says to me, you hurt my child, I'm coming out of the seat and I'm going to deal with you. And I was like, what is happening? And I just told her, not in the habit, uh, you know, because we have a rule. If I'm scanning your teeth, raise your hand if you need a break. And I'm like, listen, dude is not crying. He did not need a break. Mom ne Mama Bear needs to sit down. Right? Just saying. Oh, my gosh. Just, anyways. Hey, yeah. this is a fun show that we're yeah, about to do in exciting, man. We, we recorded our last episode. I think it was like maybe the day before the primetime Emmy, so we didn't really get to talk mm -hmm. about it or anything. So it's right. like, I'm looking forward to a great new television season, some movies that kind of tease some things. And... Exactly. Hello. Hello. I know. You're going you're gonna to hear Kurt's phone. <laughs> so go off in the background because he is downstairs currently. So everybody enjoy. You know it's real. There you go. That's a, that, that's someone talking. That's the Academy calling. It's like, yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. They're oh, like, listen, so but you love, and I remember growing up, my favorite thing was the new fall season mm -hmm. on TV. And that was when we, we didn't have streamers. You were married to NBC, CBS, you know, right. ABC. Remember they had the and big so, previews, is, like they'd show all the coming attractions yeah, of everything. What's exactly. Going on that season? And, and then the, the entertainment, entertainment oh. weekly would come out with a page about each new show. And I loved that. Yeah. Yeah. So it still has some magic left in it when we're at this, because that was always a part of our upbringing. So, so I know you just, love it. There was some great winners at the Emmys. I mean, I love Hacks. I love The Bear. I love all those. Um, oh, my went, God. I mean, there was such Hacks is amazing. And wins to go around that uh, yeah. it was a great TV season, I think, yeah. last year. I mean, as much as movies went to hell with the strike and everything, TV... Yeah. TV had Which enough is, in the yeah. can where it was pretty good. I mean, it got exactly. pushed back a lot, too. But. Is there, is there, well, let's start. We both probably have a list. Bears got the best of me. Said bears on my fantasy. Said bears into what I like. We do it all night, all right. Bears that don't discriminate. I think I call the chop and circumnavigate. Steal my heart and let it percolate all night, all right. What's one of yours on your list? Let's see. For television, I've been a huge NCIS fan forever. And oh, they have yeah. the new NCIS Origins coming up. So they have this new hot young guy playing Jethro. Um, what the hell? So, yeah. So it's <laughs> like they're, they're playing the early years of, uh, of, of, of Jethro Gibbs. And for NCIS Origins. So... I've, I've loved the show. I love the Hawaii version. I loved the uh, all the different versions of it. So they have so I'm many. To that a lot. It'll be fun. That well, they're always the good thing about those shows is they're always interesting. You know, yes. they do well in their research and writing. So it makes eighty shows not bad. You know what I mean? To be, I had you? a friend who played a dead body on one of the NCIS, and he was on screen for a good three minutes, uh, dead. So, but I'm like, hey, take it. That's awesome. I, yeah. I, I absolutely love it. Can I tell you something? You just reminded me of that dead body. I don't think I've told the yeah. story before. I might have. But my youngest brother, um, he, he made money while he was going to college by being stand-ins and extras on TV shows. Yeah. In Hollywood, it's very easy to go do all this other stuff. So right. he did some, and it's very unusual. They do... It's, I mean, it's TV magic, right? So you could be a stand-in for someone that you look nothing like, but you're the right, right old or you're the right height or something like that. Or the right color hair. Right. Yeah. He was a stand-in for Will Smith guys. 
I am a white guy. My brother's a white guy. He was a stand-in for Will Smith because he had the same body type and height as Will Smith. That's funny. But he, uh, his big claim to fame that he he loves to talk about, he was a dead guy on Hunt for Red October. He got to play a dead guy. In Hunt nice. For Red That's a legit <laughs> Oscar-winning he film. Love that. Yes. Wow. I but have a lot of respect. Television. What are you looking forward to on, for television? At least one thing for you so far. Right. Well, really quick, a lot of respect for you actors who do extra work as you're trying to make it because I don't have it in me. It's you're you're on set for too many hours. hours. I don't want to do it. Yeah. Um, okay, but so I have to say, tell me you're not dying to see Agatha Darkhold Diaries. Yes. What? Yes, I'm dying. Also, when I saw Patty Lapone is in it, I'm like, okay, let's get this. Let's start now. I don't want to wait till October. You know what I mean? That Give cutie me boy this. from Heartbreaker, Joe Locke, yes. is I think going to play yep. Wiccan. They haven't, they haven't said for sure, but they're speculating he's going to play Wiccan. Who yes, is the, the gay son. Uh, which is gay son, yes. Of Wanda, oh and I love it. And also Aubrey Plaza, who's all so always so funny, always, is in it. But when I saw Patty Lapone, I was like, legit. And I mean, it already knew we knew it was going to be Catherine Hahn's amazing. Uh, and so we were all intrigued. And now I see the first full preview and I'm like, the minute I saw that, I was like, it needs to be now. I need I this in my life. Now. I yeah. agree. I am so looking forward to that. Can I give you my big controversial one? Yes. I don't yes. even know if I'm allowed to talk about it, but I'll talk about it a very I want to know. Okay, so... Uh, one of the one of the big things that has been talked about is the new Max Max Muchnick um, television oh, yeah. coming out. Ryan yeah. Murphy is producing it, of course. Uh, it's called oh, what's it called? What's it called? What's it called? Um, oh my gosh, I'll look up the name of it. But it's basically a kind of a take on the Golden Girls for men. <coughs> That's and what Matt I heard. Matt yeah. in it, and he's playing like the Rose character. Yeah. And Linda Lavins, his mom, playing like the Sophia oh, character. I love Linda Lavins. Nathan Lane is playing the Dorothy type character. Yeah. You know, my very good friend, Stan Zimmerman, wrote an entire play right. based on this. So, yes. So he is not happy. Because about they've tried to. Uh, I was excited for the last one, but it didn't take. You know, we had George Takai in that one. and. Bruce Valanche was in that one. And that was his Art. table reading. That was the table reading yes. in his house. Yes. Exactly. And, so and like they had it. talked about that forever. It was so exciting. It didn't find feet. So, I, you know, it's tricky. I'll be interested in seeing. You get the right names, but to recreate magic like that, we'll have to see. They've got all the right people, but yes. you don't know. You don't know if it's going to work. So I hope I'll keep my fingers crossed for that one for sure. I am hoping because it does have a great cast. I love the premise of it. But it is kind of controversial because Sam, it's kind of Stan's work that Max and, and these bigger names kind of did. You would think they would need, well, I guess not because it's probably owned by someone else, right? Probably, I was like, yeah. you would think they'd yeah, have I was, to ask. I won't go into the legal hey. difficulties of that. Yeah, I know. It's, it's very It's interesting. interesting when they start. So I hope, I hope, I mean, that's such a star studded cast, but you never know. And, right. you know, so we can hope for it. You mentioned Joe Locke from Heartstopper. Heartstopper 3 comes out in, uh, in this month, in October. Um, everybody's waiting for that. I uh, didn't watch it because I didn't. I don't like romantic movies, game movies. But, but Kurt will watch a Hallmark movie at the drop of a hat. So I know Kurt's excited because I know he loved the first two seasons. So Heartstopper is finally coming out the third season. Lots of good things are supposed to happen. I um, love so. that show is so well done. It's so well acted. Is it? Well, I mean, it's based on the book, but it's like she only she did she hasn't written the last couple seasons, and it's like right. It's just so well written and so well acted, and I really like that show. So, and it's gonna be because it's streaming on Netflix. Like this new one with Matt. Much as it's streaming on Hulu, it's gonna be interesting yeah. to see what kind of dynamic that brings. So, is there a release the date for that one? Because I have Hulu. Is there a release date? A what? A release Listen? date? Um, no, it just got picked up. They they did the pilot nice. for it about when we were in Palm Springs is when they recorded nice. the pilot. Yeah. And it just got picked up by Hulu about two weeks ago. So they're they'll be done. And on on a different layer, a different note, you know that set was fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would have if nothing else, uh, if I was an actor, I would want it to keep going because I bet it's just a blast with those people. 
<laughs> you know right, what I mean? Right. And give me Linda Lavin because I love her. I've loved her forever. So what a perfect. She's so spicy and funny. Yeah, that'll be great. It's gonna so, be. And, it's gonna be a good show. I mean, the cast is right? amazing. Um, right. I can imagine. I mean, Ryan Murphy writes so well as well. Yeah. Um, so it's like if you're gonna do episodic like that, yeah, that's gonna. Be yeah. Great. Well, that should be fun. Well, they they both have huge hits under their belt. So, you know, like we said, all the pieces are there. I would like to see. Do you know something else that's coming out that I'm dying? A lot of people waited and waited and waited to see the first season of this. It's on Netflix as well. Um, and I saw it, and it was The Sandman. Of course, Neil Gaiman. It's based off oh, of his graphic yeah. novel. The first one was brilliant. We are getting a season two. Uh, they did. It's supposed to be this year. They have not announced because Netflix loves to not say a date. They, exactly. They'll tell you the day before, like, oh, better watch it now. Um, but the second season is coming out. There's a lot of queer representation in season yes. two. Uh, I'm so excited. I can't wait. It's such an odd, dark, fun ride. It is. I mean, and it's such a good dark horse comic type, too. It's, yeah. it's not one of the mainstream comics. And. The lead actor is absolutely gorgeous, but I guess his his brother is playing at either a non-binary or something. Kind yes, of there's twins, and twins are playing non-binary. Uh, he, they're going to explore his bisexuality more this season. Oh, um, yeah, I'm like, I'm down. I am in for this, and it was just so I enjoyed the first season. And I feel like second season, they probably even have a better, they have better feet under them. So I really can't wait to see what they've done. Like I said, it looks so good. The the actors were great to look at. I thought it was, if you didn't know the comic a little bit, it was a little slow, I think, maybe. Yeah. The thing. It takes you right. a bit to get into it. But if you get through the first two episodes or so, I right, think exactly. you really the first season. I think that won't be a problem with the second season. Right. Hit the ground running. So, yeah, I think I that's know. a great choice. I love that. So there's lots of streamers, you know what I mean, that yes. are coming out that will make it. Uh, Kurt's showing me pictures of Heartstopper 3. And listen, actors, I love you guys, but um, I can't do it. But <laughs> I'm like, no, if you make me feel emotion, you're dead to me. <laughs> well, and I so, think we hinted at it. I think we hinted that um, uh, Chris Stanley is going to be in season three of Heartstopper. And so. he... Can I great, just say, we talked love about that a documentary man. a couple weeks yeah. back. He has this amazing bear documentary out right now. And yeah, he's I love be him. Part of the cast, I guess. I don't know what. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, he just did a movie. Um, he's getting really good reviews on, and I love him. He's he's creative. He's funny. He's sensitive. Him and his uh, not husband. Him and his boyfriend are the cutest thing I've ever seen. Yes. Uh, so I really I hope it's very successful for him. He deserves those things. And his documentary, Unbearably Beautiful, absolutely wonderful. It's a great Fantastic. documentary. So, and it's a conversation we need to be having. But, yeah, so I had not realized he was going to be in Heartstopper 3, so that's a great, that'll be great. I'm still not going to watch it, but it's good to know. <laughs> I don't know if he has an arc or not, or if it's a one offer, but I think he's going to be in a couple of episodes. But let's be honest, if he can pull off good acting, and even if it's a one-show gig, he'll get more. You yes. know what I mean? Because yes. his personality is there. So, yeah. you know what I mean? I I, I feel like it's going to be good. He's, he's uh, comfortable he in front is, of the camera by now. Yeah. And he's been doing he's this sexy. Long. My God, he's sexy. sexy um, but, and I uh, have just discovered that I'm a whore because I also love his husband. So, they're all men are sexy and that's all I care about. But no, that's going to be Brett, a good I one. Think Brett, is that his husband, Brett, something or yes. other? Yes. A cop? I mean, a, a big cop. cop. Oh a my big God. burly cop. Thank yeah. you. So the release date for Heartstopper Season 3 on Netflix is actually, uh, was October 3rd. So go <gasps> watch it, but now. wait till we're done. Three days from now. It's right. Really, I think so make sure you watch us, and we're then doing go this watch a couple us. days ahead. Of, I think we're, this is coming out September 30th, so yeah, it'll be out. Nice. Just a October 3rd, all you people that waited. It's coming for you, and I, I wish you all the best. I'll be watching a dark show called Agatha. <laughs> Because it's black like, like my heart. Either gearing up to record to film, or they've already started filming on Red, White, and Blue too. So I'm looking forward to that. The first yeah, so that good. got a lot of good press for when they started. So yeah, that'll be great. I'm excited. I don't know what now, I expected in that movie, but it was done very well. It was very. That's exact. I saw. I let myself watch scenes, and I and they did a very good job. 
they did an excellent job. So, um, is there another one before we move to talk about movies? Do you have something else in television? Your... I don't have anything that's on my radar that I'm looking for. I mean, I, I was so impressed with the season two of um, Interview with a Vampire. Uh, Chris I... Rice produces. Yes, so, so good. I um, actually heard it was amazing, and just today I went looking to where I can watch it. Uh, yeah, I heard it's so good. Second season was amazing. I mean, first season was great. Second season was amazing. Yeah. I'm hoping it continues on. We should find out about the renewal of that pretty soon. So that yeah, oh, love that so much. Well, I have to say, so um, I don't know. Movies are harder for me because I don't always have time to go to the theater. Although I love a good movie in the theater. There's yeah. something magical. Always has been. Um, can we talk? This is a movie that I did not know. I was kind of looking around for good, like, queer-centric kind of films. There is a movie that came out in March that went to a lot of the festivals. It had a limited release, and it's called Glitter and Doom. And it is... I am. I watched previews and scenes and everything, and even though I'm going to tell you this and everybody's going to be like, that's cheesy. Mm -mm, fuck off, because I'm telling you. Check it out. Glitter and Doom is a an imagining of a story... Uh, in a musical way, so yes, it's a musical, based on songs from the Indigo Girls. And I love the Indigo Girls. And it looks, it's a love story between, this is the thing I'm like, mm, their names are Glitter and Doom. And I'm like, all right. Uh, but <laughs> it is it is this guy who has dreams of Hollywood who falls in love. Okay, I'm not doing it justice, because it's about the love story between a guy who is going to Hollywood and a circus clown. <laughs> they fall in love. And you know, how can it go? I don't like they do. Circus clowns are just everywhere waiting for you to fall in love with them. Um, but it has to do with their, you know, one needs to go to Hollywood. The circus clown wants to go to Paris because he got a, a, you know, I guess you're going to hang from the Eiffel Tower. I don't know what you're going to do. But I will tell you, watching the previews and the music and the way they deliver it, I'm sorry. This movie is one I'm sad that I missed, and I will be watching it because it looks great. And so, and plus, I support the Indigo Girls. I love them, always have. So, the Indigo Girls are amazing. I just love the name of it, Glitter and Doom. I mean, Glitter and oh, Doom. Doesn't just, it feel like you're new from Marvel? New from exactly, Marvel, Glitter and Doom. Right? Oh my goodness! It's their gay superhero uh, yeah. next movie. But check, you can go see. You know, the previews are all over the internet. Uh, I think it's probably, I'm going to check some of our local indie theaters and see mm -hmm. if they're going to have it. But as soon as it's a streamer, I'm watching it. I'm going to have conversations with friends. I just, it sounds amazing. Now, what are some movies you're looking forward to in the new season? Well, new it, it's interesting because we're taping that by the time this airs, the Venice Film Festival and the Toronto International Film Festival will right. both just be over with. And they have some amazing film lineups this year. And it's more, not as much the films that are playing, but the different characters that are being played. I'm really looking forward. And, and you know, our good friend, David Reddish, that we stayed with when we yes, were in yeah. Studio City, um, he's, he's come on as my uh, entertainment correspondent again. We talked about right. a new film that he shared with me called Queer. And it um, stars... Uh, fantastic uh, Daniel Day Lewis, or no, Daniel Craig, oh, Daniel Craig I love from James Craig. Bond, yes, yes. as as this kind of Jack Kerouac y, very kind of hipster, freewheeling kind of character, flamboyant gay character that I'm really looking forward to. I think Daniel Craig is an amazing actor. Uh, I don't know if you saw Knives Out, where he played oh, this oh, detective. Both, and, both the sequel and the original, yeah. Oh. And so I'm really looking forward to this film called Queer. And it's very, like I said, it's very kind of Jack Kerouac, very road trippy, very huh. has this great younger boy in, in looking for it. So I'm looking for the char The characters are what's bringing it to it. And it's just right. called Queer. It's a historical drama. And I think it's set in Mexico. These guys kind of on the lam because of a something gone wrong or something. So um, his character's on the lam. But I'm really looking forward to that. He and there's recounts, a he recounts his life in Mexico City. Oh, I just want to read that in that voice for you. There you go. Kurt is I'm in ready. his hand, got phone, I'm telling you. But I yeah. know. Well, his he's always his phone always. He's always a busy <laughs> man. He's a busy man. 
Um, I love it. First of all, so we have a new toy in our studio where Kurt can look up anything and put it on my screen. Oh, and nice. So, and so I love it. And that's what he was showing me, this new movie Queer. I didn't even know about it until you said it. And now I'm curious. It's just about... premiering now at the festival. It's not out in wide release yet. It's just yeah. premiering at the festivals. Hopefully we... it'll be released soon. Can but... we be honest? It worked in the gays' favor when Hugh Jackman played a very flamboyant gay man on Broadway, and now he's gay. Uh, and it, he know he hasn't outed himself yet, but we all saw what we've all seen. What we've seen, he's gay, and I love him. We welcome him with open arms, and and we'll just keep the arms open right now. Uh, so maybe Daniel Craig is going to play this flamboyant. And then next, Daniel, Daniel. Yeah. And he can finally announce that him and I have been lovers secretly. <laughs> can finally, the official wedding announcements will be going out soon. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, it looks very really, interesting. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be, it looks very interesting. And then there's another one along those lines, another historical drama called On Swift Horses. And it's kind of set, it's almost like, did you see Champions or read about Champions is passing with... Yeah. Uh, um, Zendaya and those things are kind of a tennis right. match. Two Which is kind things. of sexy, even in the, the previews, you're like, oh, I feel kind of naughty. I love Very it. Very sexy. Yeah. Well, now there's this film called On Swift Horses, which is kind of another, kind of a three-character three, three character type piece. Jacob Alordi, who's just been a huge kind of rising star because he's like a six-foot-four gorgeous boy. He's on the same show as Zendaya. What's it called? Uh, uh, oh, um, oh, it's on HBO. Starts with an Max. E, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Euphoria. 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 <laughs> there so it is. He is playing a gay character in this film. So Jason, Jacob Elordi playing gay. Nice. Um, coming out, at, it was at the Toronto Film Festival as well. It doesn't have a release date yet. But it's and... kind of like, it's set with um, post-Korean War, where it's this guy and his wife, and Jacob plays this guy's brother that comes to them, and then he ends up going to Vegas and and meeting this guy there, and the wife has a whole backstory. Yeah, and like it, she starts addicted to betting on horses. Like there's the horse. Yeah, the, the wife does. Yeah, the wife. Yes, does. yeah. Very interesting. So yeah, it That's has fascinating. So on swift horses is another one. So those two are a little off yeah. the radar for most people, but and I it has it. its. It's uh, its premiere is at the Toronto International Film Festival. That's its first yes. showing at everything. So fascinating. I want to see the six foot four delicious human. I want Jacob to see him. Jacob Lordy is a very handsome man. And then it sounds he sounds like my type completely. Oh yeah, he is. Wow. I'll just be over here looking at pictures. There you go. Jacob I love that. No, he oh. he's a very handsome man. And then yeah. the last film I'll talk about that I'm very interested in seeing, it was released last year in 2023, but just going into wider, it did the festival circuit, but it's going into wider release now, called Thing Thing. It's more of a documentary, and it's based on uh, Coleman Domingo from Bayard Rustin is yeah. the star of it and everything is yeah. blowing up so big right now. And it's basically bringing these Broadway musicals to prisons. And it's almost a documentary about putting on these documentary. Um, Hold on. Is it about bringing a Broadway musical to Sing Sing prison? Wow. It's, it's doing it in different prisons. So yeah. Cause it's, that's it's, a rough prison. It, it's called that's, Sing yeah. Sing. Just, but, but yeah, it starts about, and it's oh, very yeah. <gasps> Yes. Cause everybody's talking about his performance. Yeah. Uh, all the behind the scenes people. That's okay. right. Amazing. And it's based Ooh. on true story. So yeah, it's interesting. It's, uh, it's like if Oz, which is back in our day when HBO did Oz, meets you know like a uh, company on Broadway. This is hey, when Chris Maloney comes on for a stupid little back <gasps> commercial for that little copper right. thing he does. Yeah, like, exactly. Sit and watch that commercial. Because <laughs> yeah. it was nice to see him naked back in the day. I'm not gonna lie. Yes. But Sing Sing, this looks really good actually. I'm pretty impressed. So yeah, so and he is such a good out actor. There, maybe not on everyone's radar, but are definitely going to be worth the look. I think. I think that's well, and they have. There's a little queer bent to it, not to you know put too heavy a a word on it, but there's a little bent to them, which is also fun. Um, we want to support those. I like that we're seeing more in the big movies. We're seeing more of that kind right. of. Doesn't have to be what the movie's about. It's just that we exist. I love that. 
We just need to keep adding representation every year just to show yeah. that our stories are out there, whether they're, and I don't care if the movie's good, bad, or ugly, as long as we have right. representation. I mean, there's shitty movies out there. It's yes, happen. there are. There's great characters <laughs> and gay characters. But just and as long as it's an, I want right? us to be in a damn bad movie. Yes, as long as it's out, as long as we're creative and allowed to be creative, as long as the indie industry continues, there'll be a lot of crap and a lot of really diamonds in the rough. But we couldn't have a diamond in the rough if there wasn't crappy movies. Right. So we'll take What's, it. I mean, we'll go off topic for a second there. What is your take on Jacob Elordi and Daniel Craig, very heterosexual actors, taking on gay gay roles? What's you your know, thought it, on that? It's fascinating. Uh, they had um, two. They had an actor from Modern Family. What was his name? The redhead married to Cam. Jesse Ferguson. Yeah. yeah, he just recently had a, a podcast. He was on being interviewed on the podcast, and he said, "I don't know." Oh my god! Sorry, I just saw a really good picture of Jay. Oh, okay, mm. I can't look at him. Um, and he had a very interesting conversation. He goes, "The." Uh, What's his name? The guy who played Cam, um, Stone Street, Eric Stone Street, uh, Eric was Stone Street. Eric Stone yeah, Street. Yeah, was perfect for the part. He goes, and I don't think if we were casting Modern Family today, if he would be cast because, and the hard thing about that is, we do want opportunities for our gay brothers and sisters. But I have a sitcom I am uh, going to be casting and this is what I'll say. My, I want representation. So if I can have a whole queer crew, I want it. But I also want to serve the script. And if that means if there's someone there that is we aren't allies part of our community. So it's this very nuanced. I'm going to get so much hate mail for this. Uh, it's very nuanced, but at the same time, I think both have to be taken for granted. I mean, not taken for granted, have to be taken in account. Right. Is if there's representation and they're really good, awesome. If there's an ally that nails it, I'll probably cast that ally. But I know a lot, and I, I want my brothers and sisters to be represented, but I think, I think it's, it's hard. What do you think? I think the same thing. I think I would love, it's just not a reality. I would love for there to be colorblind casting and queer, and queer thing. I mean, that you have so many people apply now. I mean, especially with self tapes anymore, instead of yeah. seeing 20 people in an interview room, you're seeing yeah. a thousand people sending self tapes these days, right? Yeah. So I would love that they're just looking at the character and it doesn't say anywhere idea what their orientation is. Right. I think. I would. I think that's where you're going to find the best actor for it. Yeah. Uh, the best performer. So I think that's what's important to serve the script, as you say. Is it yeah. nice if 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 you just if they happen to be gay or if they were if you only had gay people applying for it? Right. That would be fantastic. But yeah. I I just don't think that's a realistic. And uh, what do you do uh, with uh, someone like the character of Jack McFar McFarland? He was not out. When he played that role, right. he is out. He came out as the seasons progressed. So it is. So in the beginning, you wouldn't want him there because you you don't want him taking you know representation away. And right. yet, in the end, you're going to cheer him on. So it's. I really think we're in an evolution. When I first, the first time we tried to cast uh, the sitcom that we were doing, I had to tell actors as they came in that it was a gay thing sitcom. Because actors back then would be like, oh, I can't do it then. Right, sure. And that's crazy because that was like 11 years ago. And now uh, we had, when we were uh, casting in LA, we had 600 men that were both gay, bi, straight, who wanted to play my boyfriend. And so it had changed in just a decade. So much has changed. Right. So I think you always have to have your eye to representation. But if that's all you're looking for... How do you have the best? What is your message in that show? What is your message in that uh, meeting? And how do you best put it out there? Are, are you sacrificing it? Because people can say they're gay and not be gay. People well, and, and can backlog, say they're straight and not be straight. Right. And how much can you get for 
your Jack McFarlane characters, just as an example, you know, Jack McFarlane, if it was played by a gay person, oh, he's doing such a stereotypical gay right? thing. It's like, you're going to get it on either side, right? So I yeah. think it's really, you need to find the person, you need to, they're playing a character. Get over yeah. it. Yeah, there yeah. was a lovely gentleman I interviewed years and years and years ago, and he was doing a movie about a transgender boxer, and the movie was called Something Baby. But we talked about in the interview how hard it was they wanted to find a transgender act, a trans actress who would play the part. And he said, we had maybe two who auditioned out of everyone. So what is your, and back then it was a little even heavier. Um, and so it's hard. So here's the thing. I think everybody who's watching ready to cancel me. Um, I think we understand the heaviness of it, but don't cancel someone before you know the struggle they went to to cast that part. And we do not know. We do not, if you can handle the character with respect and empathy, and sometimes we celebrate that. You know what I mean? Because it's telling the story. Right. Representation doesn't trump talent and vice versa. I don't think talent. Yeah, exactly. They have to be. The same conversation. They exactly. have to be. Both yeah. needs to be part of it. You need to have representation. You need to have talent. I mean, it just exactly. It is what it is. So. I love it. That's, That's a, a really good. Yeah. yeah, it was. That was so, excellent. So we have things to look out for. We're going to be looking over yeah. for uh, good old Miss Harkness there. Um, I'm looking forward <laughs> to that. Cannot Couple wait. Of movies to look out for. This was a fun chat. I love it. I mean. Right. Gonna be a great season. I know, and even and even ended on a controversial note, so which means y'all have to give us your opinion. Y'all, you, you start with "I love you too," and then give us your opinion. <laughs> and it's gonna but, be. I mean, I didn't even bring it up, but it's gonna be interesting for for just talking about allies. You got uh, Lady Gaga playing Harlequin with Joaquin Phoenix coming up. I know in the Joker sequel. That's gonna be interesting. Too. I feel like anytime she steps on a set, it's everybody waits you hold your breath so far every movie i've seen her do she's brilliant but you know what that does everybody waits they wait for them to fall but she's a really good actress i really enjoy her that'll bring up one of our i didn't want to bring that up i don't know why i brought it up because i didn't want to bring it up because of all the controversy of joaquin phoenix walking away from the current the thing. New, we'll, we'll talk about yeah. that another time but that's yeah we will because i got i got opinions i got some spicy opinions on that <laughs> bullshit so yes I agree, but this has been fun. So it's can been I throw fun. Anything Thanks for around. tuning in, guys. Let us know what you're looking forward to in film and television. You can always email us at podcastbears at gmail.com. Look for us next Monday. We're going to be live on Instagram. You can find us either Bears of a Certain Age or the Queer Centric or Left of Straight. We're always on one of the three of those or two of the three of those. So look for that live. Join us in the live. And it's been fun as always, Johnny. I appreciate you, my friend been a blast this is so much fun and uh lots of fun to come so there we there go there you go have a great week everyone we'll talk to you next time bye 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 bears got the best of me said bears on my fantasy said bears into what i like we do all